BioBlitz is an intensive survey of all the plants and animals that grow in a place uh, over a particular time frame where we want to see what kinds of plants and animals of all types uh, live along our waterways. We get as many taxonomic experts as possible from different uh, taxonomic areas and they come out in a short period of time, today we're going from nine to three, and list all of the potential organisms that they can find in their expertise. Obviously, with me holding these, we're part of the plant team. What we're doing, we have the Garfield Park, and we're just walking around making a list of the plants that we can find in the area. What I have here is one that everybody knows. Uh, this is pokeweed, uh, which when it's young, people could actually pick and eat the leaves. When it gets older, it's poisonous, so don't. Uh, but it makes a nice salad when it's young. And you can see the very small flowers up on the tip right there. And then here is what it looks like as it matures and the flowers get fertilized and you start developing then those purple fruits on the long stem right there. So it's one of the plants that we just, we just found right over here. So we're here to sample fish today and, and we're at Fall Creek right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little electricity in the water using this backpack electrofisher. And when we do that, the fish kind of swim towards our probe we have in the water and then we can net them up real easy. But we're just here today to try to get as many different kinds of species of fish as we can. This is a black red horse this type of sucker. There's big schools, there's big schools of these throughout the river. Big channel catfish. Now, this is a species a lot of people would go fishing for. And they're right here in Fall Creek, right now down in Indianapolis. Jeff Holland, I'm an associate professor of entomology at Purdue University, and I'm here uh, looking at beetle biodiversity for the bioblitz. Uh, what I'm using is a beading sheet, and you hold this under a branch of a tree or a shrub, and you beat the shrub, and the insects fall onto the sheet, and it's a white sheet, and you can see them, and you pick them up. So with the sweet net, what you do is, if you're in um, some type of uh, vegetation, basically as you're walking, you just sweep the net like this, and you're picking up whatever insects are um, sort of flying up, um, trying to scatter from your walking. Once you get your insects, um, you can put them in the vial of ethanol. We're using the light to pull in insects. It's a really effective way to pull a lot of insects out of a big area and concentrate it in a small area so you don't have to go find them all. You just pick them off the sheet. Uh, I'm Megan Martin. Uh, I work for Environmental Solutions and Innovations in Indianapolis. I'm Jeremy Sheets. I'm uh, with Orbis Environmental Consulting and we're both bat biologists and we're out here uh, doing acoustics for the Urban Bio Blitz. We picked this location because it was along a creek which is bats use as corridors. There's also some bat roosting habitat. So there's snags, uh, which are dead trees that many of the bat species will utilize for their day roost. Oh yeah. So this is a bat detector and it's basically a microphone on a, a processor. It basically captures echolocation and records it. Um, we take this microphone off, put it on the pole. That sound is the echo, or is the ultrasound that my fingers make. Bats kind of sound like this. Took me years to figure that out. We're looking for specific um, frequencies, and certain bats have different structure to their frequencies. Some are higher frequency, some of them bounce all around, and some of them uh, are unique in shape. So we can use that to identify most species, not all. Oh, I'm Dr. Mark Milne. I'm at the University of Indianapolis. I specialize in spider taxonomy, uh, ecology, and biodiversity within the state. This is a wolf spider. Specifically, it's uh, the species is Tigrosa haluo. It's the largest wolf spider in Indiana. It was underneath a decaying log where uh, they can find uh, small prey items like uh, columbula, and they also feed on other spiders. They'll feed on all kinds of insects. We want to get a snapshot of exactly what plants and animals are living along the waterways now so that we can come back in the future, maybe five or ten years, and compare and see how the improvements we've done have um, changed the environment for the plants and animals that can live there.